Hello badminton community and welcome to episode 11 of the Tokyo 2020 show. This is our last episode today. I'm Jeff, this is Henry. We are from the Badminton Podcast and Volant, here to bring you the latest news, um, results, polls, predictions and more on the show. It's the last day, Henry. It's been a crazy 10, 11 days now. You know, a year ago, we would have never thought that we would actually be running the, the Tokyo 2020 show. And it's been an amazing journey uh, for us, you know, being able to watch badminton every day, all day. Uh, and you know, a year ago, we didn't even, we had no idea that the results of the Olympics were going to be the way that so they turned out yeah. to be as well. Very, very strange. Uh, I think if the Olympics was, was played a year ago, the results would be so much different. Mm, yeah. And it, I think we've had a great time hosting, had, had a great time watching, mm. spending all day watching badminton. But uh, I guess the big challenge for us was that we couldn't show any actual footage mm. because of the ISC rights and we couldn't show the, the video, which everyone loves to see. So. I think yeah. overall, um, it's been a challenge, but awesome fun. Yeah, yeah, we are, yeah. I definitely really enjoyed it, and you know, you know, being able to sit here with you, watching watching the badminton every day has been has been really enjoyable. So thanks. Learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. I guess the the let's do a bit of a run through as to what happened last night. In firstly, the women's singles bronze medal match between Herbing Zhao and PV Sindhu. What did you think of that? Yeah, look, so of course we all know that Sindhu won that in straight sets. Mm. We did find that uh, Sindhu was able to take that net again, right? Mm. Uh, like she did against Yamaguchi, but couldn't do against Tai Si Ying. And because of that, it just set up her attack so well. Mm. And I feel that Herbing Zhao, even though she's got a really strong game, she's not as quiet as fast as Tai Si Ying. Mm. So she couldn't really force PV Sindhu around the court and bully her around like Tai Si Ying did to twist her from corner to corner. Mm. And because of that, PV Sindhu was able to keep up. She was still able to increase speed for attacks and stuff. And I think that's probably where the difference lie between the result between her and Tai Si Ying versus her and uh, He Bing Zhao. Yeah, it was almost like a bit, a bit of a role reversal where PV Sindhu was pushing her Bing Zhao around the mm. court and, and Bing Zhao, when she had the opportunity to actually challenge the net, she didn't really do much of that and spent yep. most of the time in the rear court. Um, but yeah, moving on to women's singles gold, that was that was an epic three setter uh, between Tai Si Ying and Chen Yufei, uh, going in three sets, uh, 21-18, 19-21, 21-18 uh, to Yufei. What did you think of that one? Yeah, look, I think that Tai Si Ying was definitely playing a lot better, like she started a lot better mm. than in her previous matches. Now, Beth, by better I mean that she wasn't as scared, it seemed like she, she was mm. going for a shot, she was going for attacks. The only problem with that was that she started to make quite a lot of errors. So mm. she would play some a good string of points, but then she would make many errors in a row all of a sudden and it was just like a bounce between both we we lost a bit of consistency in the play and especially that around the head smash from the, the around the head side cross court smash or half smash she was missing that by this much every single time yeah and i think that that was tricky because yeah. she Chen Yufei was retrieving so well that she had to try to hit lines to try to win the points mm. yeah and i think that like you said that particular shot it probably was the fifth shot that we saw that eventually went in actually hit the net tape um so there was so many errors that you we wouldn't typically see especially in, the, in that third set where she was trailing and then of course finally on that match point where she's trying to place a net and it could barely even get get to the net yeah yeah, yeah. so at that stage Chen Yifei was exhausted i think mm. and she was just following she wasn't really creating but in the first and second like she was actually trying to change the tempo of her movement and her shots and her speed but she wasn't doing any of that in the third. She was just kind of feeding off Tai Si Ying's speed and just trying mm. to get things back, get things back. But unfortunately, Tai Si Ying couldn't just stay strong enough, maybe mentally. I think that physically mm. she was okay, but I think it was a bit hard mentally to just keep pushing and keep getting it over and over and keep working yeah. really hard for every point. I think, yeah, yesterday we talked about uh, that she, you know, the, the results of the match would depend quite highly on her confidence level. And she was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because she needed to play those long rallies to win the point yet when there were long rallies she would make mistakes mm. so it was really challenging in that sense so I think Yufei was was you know kudos to her for sticking to it uh, because we did say that you know physically she might be limited and, and she was looking very exhausted Tired, by the yeah, end of it. Yeah. yeah but rather than hear from us let's hear from them so let's hear from Chen Yufei Tai Si Ying in their post-match press conference uh, 
一六年以后遇到了很多的困难，就特别是中国女单。然后我觉得今天能站在最高领奖台上，我觉得是对我们女单的一个肯定吧，然后也是对我自己的一个肯定，然后很开心。嗯，对，就是在第三局的时候，自己其实从一开始就失误比较多，然后造成自己在分数上的落后。那到了第三局后半的时候，其实想要追，但是因为前面失误了太多，所以导致自己没有办法追过。其实我的体能，其实我感觉是会有点，呃，也不是有点吧，是挺累的，但是就是。就是自己也还能继续坚持吧，可能我看起来就比较惨，但是我也还能坚持。So earlier this afternoon,、uh, Jeff, we saw the、uh, women's doubles bronze match between Lee Sohee Shin Sung Chan、uh, versus Kim So Young Kong Hee Young.、Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think of that one? Yeah, I actually tipped Lee and Shin for that one, but、mm. of course they did lose. They were the seeded pair. They lost quite, not, I wouldn't say convincingly. It was still、mm. a really hard fought match, but straight sets. I think that Kim was really the defining factor. Like she was really playing well. So we see, saw her counter attacking really well, and not just lifting. She was lifting, but then、mm. taking those opportunities, and then she was also attacking really smartly. So I think、yeah. all the three of the other girls were just hammering every smash, every single time.、Yeah. Whereas she was taking speed out. She was doing like the high smashes, which were really hard to defend as well.、Yeah. So I think that I think that she was definitely the star of the, the, that match, and that's the reason. That's the change. Or sorry,、yeah. that was the difference. Yeah. That got them to the to the W, the win. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, the the other three women's players were basically bringing their normal game, whereas Kim took it one notch higher、mm. uh, when she was yeah blocking off. It typically was off of Sohi smash, blocking off Sohi smash,、um, and then Sohi had to basically run from the backhand corner to the forehand corner.、Um, but yeah, she was just pay, playing so intelligently、mm. um, on court today, and that's probably why、um, that the、uh, Kim and Kong did end up winning that one. Yep. Twenty one ten, twenty one seventeen. So in terms of the women's doubles gold, we had Apriani,、uh, Rahayu,、uh, and Grazia Polly versus Chen Chichen, Jai Yifan in what was a magical moment、uh, when they when they beat them in straight sets, which was essentially a psychological warfare、um, from the start. Yeah, it was, it was quite strange, right? So usually we see Chen Chichen really vocal, really loud, which we, she was in that first set. But what we found the second half of that first set, as well as in the second set, we saw Grazia kind of. Tactically, I think she was like、mm. smiling. So, like Jay Fun would serve an ace against her, that drive serve, and then、mm. she would just smile. And then、uh, Rahayu was smiling initially first as well. And I think that maybe psychologically that was a bit of a challenge for the Chinese because usually maybe they're used to being not hated, but usually get usually used to frustrating the opponents. But now they couldn't frustrate them so much.、Mm. Maybe dearm them a bit. Yeah. And then we found that. Rahayu got really loud after that, and then Chen 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 kind of came down, and、mm. she wasn't so loud, and and all of a sudden there was a huge role reversal where psychologically the Chinese weren't able to do much.、Mm. Like I would, I would say that they their game, like I would have tipped them to win as favourites. Of course,、um, but Grazia and Rahayu just were able to play that mental game, play, play solidly. But then we just saw errors from the Chinese. Uh, mistakes where they're both going for the shuttle and leaving it, and just slow and making just so many errors that we wouldn't usually see. Yeah, and I think it does highlight the the pressure of, of the Olympics,、yeah. right?、Um, which we probably didn't probably didn't talk about, I guess, so much in the Tai Siying versus Chen Yufei match. But you know, the the Olympic pressure probably. Played a huge factor in that, and then yeah, and the initial psychological, I'd say, advantage that Chen Qingchen brings to the women's doubles game wasn't quite there. It was almost sort of immediately shut down by the Indonesians,、mm. and we had Apriani started to get very vocal. And as you said, Chen Qingchen sort of just just got really within her own world.、Um, and then when she did you know, eventually check into the match, which you know, unfortunately, we're saying saying as if she wasn't there for most of the time, but she kind of checked in and really focused. She did quieten down, but she focused. Focused and started to play a bit better towards the end of the second set, but then Jai Yifan looked like she was she was checking out. Whereas the whole most of the game, Jai Yifan was actually playing the better、really、well. Of the yeah, I think yeah. so as well. Which is usually the opposite way. It's usually Chen Chen、mm. Chen who's who's motivating and fueling that fire. But I think Jai Yifan had to step up to that today. Yeah, but that、yeah. was a magical moment. And the I guess the 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 final point they had they had pretty much started to celebrate, right? Yeah,、um, it was clearly it, out. Yeah, clearly out. But they they were already already. Celebrating, yeah, it, yeah. that was a magical moment for us.、Mm -hmm. mm. Definitely, with all the tears, you can see how much it means to them.、Mm. 
So we're gonna have a chat to someone which you probably all know or very many of you do know. He was a former men's singles player from England. His name is Ben Beckman. Now he has released quite a lot of content himself at Tokyo, no, sorry, not in Tokyo, but for the Tokyo 2020 games. And you probably have seen some of his videos. So let's have a chat to him. So Ben, was the Olympics what you had expected? Uh, yeah, I would say that from before the Olympics began, a lot of the players and pairs that I thought would do well have done well. Uh, but that's not to say that this Olympics has brought up some very unexpected things, uh, some unexpected performances in Kevin Corden's dream run to the, to the semifinals. Uh, an unexpected result just happened just now with the women's doubles, with the Indonesians becoming the first ever Indonesian women's doubles pair to win an Olympic gold. Uh, Polly is the oldest champion now ever in the Olympics. And now Indonesia are the only nation as alongside China that now have a champion in all five disciplines. So, uh, you know, you've also got Momota's shock loss in the groups. I did think maybe he would struggle to win the tournament. Um, you're right. Yes, uh, I did think, yeah, I did think, yeah. Yeah, Momota's shock loss in the group was another unexpected thing, as well as also Japan's women's events. You know, they both lost their women's singles players to the quarterfinals. Uh, and the same in the women's doubles, which is quite a surprising thing. I mean, at the Olympics, you're going to get a couple of unexpected results. But I feel in this one, there's been more than usual. And that's not to be, not to be uh, too unexpected with all the circumstances leading towards these games. Yeah, definitely. So many unexpected wins and losses on both sides. So lots of tears of joy, but lots of tears of anguish and, and sadness, I guess. But looking at all the matches, we've seen so many great matches over the last 10, 11 days worth. So what was your favourite match? Oh, that's a tough one. There's been uh, great matches from day one. Uh, with, uh, on, exact, on day one, you had Li Yang and Wang Chilin having an absolute epic match against Ranky Reddy and Shetty. That's definitely up there. But it would probably be, for me, the women's singles final yesterday. That was an unbelievable match. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a women's singles final and Olympics as good as that. Um, the, the, emotion, the emotions it had me feeling, I haven't felt that way since I watched Linda and Lee Chong-Wei in 2012. I must admit, you know, the, 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 there was that kind of nervousness, even though I didn't mind too much who won. If I had to pick, I probably wanted Tai Ziying, but it was quite neutral. I was just enjoying the match. I got so sucked in and the rallies were phenomenal you know Tai Ziying playing uh, all sorts of shots under that kind of pressure was quite phenomenal and she wasn't making as many errors as maybe she had done in the past but Chen Yufei she anticipated almost everything kept her calm and after her previous rounds I was quite surprised at the level that she brought it was just just a fantastic final between amazing two amazing players and it's a shame that one had to one had to lose that one, but it, that for me, if I had to pick one match, it is definitely that women's singles final. Yeah, it's exactly what you want to see in a gold medal match. Going to three fight with a tight contest between two, you know, fantastic, phenomenal exactly. players. Um, that's what that's what we're looking for when we're watching the Olympics, right? Um, so, in terms of maybe not that match, but uh, just across the entire Olympics, what was the best moment for you? Oh, there's been quite a few. Um, I think my best moment, and I think it's one of the greatest Olympic moments ever for badminton, is obviously Kevin Corden's dream run. Uh, it was ended yesterday in the semi-finals against uh, Victor, but obviously it's not quite over yet, as later on today he's going to play for the bronze medal against Ginting, which uh, I think could be very interesting. But, you know, it's his fourth Olympics. He's 34. Uh, you know, the perseverance, everything coming from a you know, country like Guatemala. I mean, I don't think many people, uh, some of the people from some countries even heard of that country. Um, so for him to kind of come out with this kind of result, you know, beating Unkar Long in the groups, then Mark Haljo, and then obviously he beat uh, Hui Kwang He, who beat Momota. It's just been a fantastic run and kind of encapsulates and sums up everything that the Olympics is really about. So if I had to pick the moment, it's probably that. I mean, there's been quite a few, but I think it's hard to beat that one, if I'm honest. Yeah, fantastic. And lastly, Ben, one more question for you. If you're going to choose someone to keep an eye out for, for Paris, 
who would you tip to say, hey, keep an eye out on this player or this oh, player? Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I mean, quite a lot of the pairs that have done well here, like if you think of Liang and Wang Chi Lin, who are phenomenal in the men's doubles, they're still, what, 26 and 20? Are they 26, I think? So in Paris is only three years away. So they could be in the absolute prime of their life. But, you know, that men's doubles category has got some really promising players. You know, I've mentioned Ranky Reddy and Shetty. They were really good. If they continue to improve, they could be very dangerous in three years. Um, you know, the women's singles category is still full of very young, promising players. I mean, Unsi Young, I mean, all of them really. I mean, Unsi Young, though, needs to develop a little more of attack. But if she does that, then she could be very very uh you know promising but i feel there's probably some other players that weren't at these olympics that i feel you know could very well be you know on the on the podium in paris i mean if you think back to to rio players like lizzy jar were just in the world junior ranks and now they're they're tipped for medal hope so you don't know who's going to be there in paris 2024 um you know there's a really good player from Thailand, Kunlavut Batitsan, that I think is really good. Given three more years, he's going to be up there. Um, but yeah, no, I think a lot of the players, it's hard to pick one. There's so many and, that, you know, they're obviously the older players, but there are quite a lot of players that are going to be in the absolute prime of their life come, come Paris. So it's a difficult one to pick, if I'm honest. There's, there's so many to pick from. Yeah, so I, th I think that it, it highlights uh, the the change just with the last year as to who we originally thought was going to do so well at Tokyo and the years passed and, you know, a different group of people have now rose to the podium. So knowing knowing who's going to be there in Paris it is hard. We know, who's, we know roughly who's going to be there, but we don't know those that we just don't know. Um, so exactly. That's, that's the beauty of it as well and the beauty of the Olympics bringing everyone yeah. together. Um, so exactly. thanks, Ben. Thanks for showing us your crystal ball. <laughs> I didn't really pick anyone, and in, 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 <laughs> I wasn't too specific there. It's just, I think it's too difficult, as uh, the results from these Olympics have shown, and some from in the past. I think it's quite difficult to really uh, pick who's going to do well and who's not. But there's, there's definitely, there's, you know, going to be some amazing players when it comes to Paris in three years' time. Perfect. All right. Th thanks a lot for joining us, Ben. No worries. It was good to be here. Thanks for having me. So in terms of the matches tonight, we have the last two matches of the Olympic Games for badminton. We have the gold medal match uh, that is between Victor Axelsen and Chen Long, and we have the bronze medal match, uh, Kevin Cordon versus Anthony Sinisuka Ginting. Uh, the bronze medal will, will play first, and that will start at 8 p.m. Tokyo or local time. So Jeff, Kevin Cordon versus Anthony Ginting, what do you think? Well, I would love this to have a fairy tale ending for Kevin Cordon to get a medal for Guatemala. That would be amazing. And mm. I think he's already inspired millions and so many people to, to take up badminton or just to say, hey, it's possible. I'm not mm. from one of the main countries. It's actually possible to do really well. So I'd love to see him win that. But I do think that Ginting will be just too fast. Um, I think that if, if Kevin can't get through him with this mash and Ginting's defense is very strong, it's going to yeah. be hard for Kevin to, to beat him just on speed. Um, so I think I'm going to go with Anthony Ginting, Indonesia, for this, this match. Yeah, I think that if, if the rally draws on for too long, I'm sure that Ginting will outplay um, Kevin. So I, I'm going to agree that Ginting's probably going to take this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. How and about then, uh, Victor Axelsen versus Chen Long, Jeff? Yeah, look, I think that the Victor that we've seen at this tournament or at the Olympics is like the highest level that he has played, I think is almost unplayable. Mm. So if he can bring that high level, I think that he's going to win this match. We did see him uh, play against Cordon in the semi-final where mm. it didn't seem like he was as focused or as brutal with his, his attack or his intensity or focus. But I think that he will rise to this occasion. The pressure was really high in the semi-finals, I think, because he had mm. that high expectation to win because he was heavy, heavy, heavy favorite. Yeah. I do think that he is favorite for this one still, but kind of if he loses, people will kind of think, oh, it's Chen Long, like yeah. that's fair enough because Chen Long's crazy good, like mm. he's just a machine, like he can go all day and he's so stable. But in summary, I think Victor Axelsen, especially if he can bring the game on like he did against Shiyuchi, 
Yeah, look, I, I agree that if Axelsson can bring the game that he brought against Yuchi, uh, then he has the, I guess, the skills uh, and, and the level to, to beat Chen Long. Uh, my biggest concern is when he played Kevin um, and that he couldn't play to the level that he was playing against Yuchi. And of course, maybe that was a tactical difference that he made, um, when, even though the scoreline itself was quite convincing against Kevin. I just didn't think Axelsson was playing as good as he did against Yuchi. He definitely wasn't finding the line. He was keeping everything sort of within, you know, the 60, 70% of the middle of the court. Uh, so I actually, I'm actually gonna tip Chen Long for this one. Um, we haven't seen Chen Long you know, suffer under any pressure in this Olympics so far. And he's been able to control the drift, the length so well, um, as well as, you know, be so intelligent, especially against someone like Yinting the other night. Hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll agree to disagree then. I guess we'll find out. My prediction levels have been, have been slightly, slightly on top of yours lately. Uh, so, but we will, but we will find out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's raise a racket, Henry. Mm -hmm. Today's our last day and we would love to raise a racket to everyone, but I think it's very well deserving that we do need to raise a racket to Grazia Poli and Apriani Rahayu. Mm -hmm. That gold medal match just now, yeah, awesome. Amazing. Awesome, and we won that psychological battle and Indonesians um, rejoice because there's another gold medal coming home. Yeah, well done. All right, so in terms of our poll yesterday, I bet you're all, well, 7,000 of you are wondering where Guatemala is because we had over 14,000 votes and 48.5% of you got the location of Guatemala correct, uh, which you will see on screen now. And the answer is? A. It is in, it is in South America. And uh, for those who didn't know that, now you do know. So Guatemala is on the map for you now. So as it is the last episode of the Tokyo 2020 show, there were so many moments that we could really talk about. And we have talked about so many of them on some of our other episodes, Jeff. But in terms of what your most, I guess, upsetting moment and best moment is, what would that be? I definitely have to, I'll start with the upsetting moment. I definitely think that the most upsetting moment for me personally was when Kento Momoda lost in that group stage against uh, Hyo Kwan Hee mm. from Korea. Um, that was just devastating for me because I had him picked as favorite to win the gold. Yeah. And I'm a huge Kento Momoda fan, as we've talked about. And I think that it's gonna be a moment that is upsetting for a lot of people around the world, even if you're not from Japan, because he does have a huge following and fan base. So definitely mm. that loss hit pretty hard for me. Yeah. Uh, but the best moment for me was seeing Wang Chilin and Li Young just dominate that men's doubles. Look, they lost in the group match against Ranky Reddy and Shetty, and then they just brought it. Mm. It was just a pleasure to watch them play. They were just amazing, invincible. Yeah. Like they, they were unplayable for, for four sets of semifinals and finals. And so that was probably the most magical or the best moment for me to watch those matches. Yeah, I think when when they when you did get to see Liang and Wang Chilin play, they were just so good that you wanted the game to continue, although their opponents couldn't keep up. That that was the challenge that, mm. that we couldn't keep watching more of it. So yeah, that was a, definitely a great moment. And of course, uh, Momoda losing uh, in that second set when he hit the tape, that was that was pretty awful as well. But in terms of my most upsetting moments, I think we talk about this on the, one of the up, other episodes, is that you introduced me to Yuta Watanabe when he was sort of first coming onto the scene. And, and I've developed you know a, a huge fan, fan love for, for Watanabe and when he had lost the mixed doubles uh, against uh, Huang Dongping, Wang Yidu, when he was playing with uh, Arisa Higashino. Um, that, was a, that was a bit of a, a heart, heart, heartbreak for me, but it was more so that he, he had to play his men's doubles in you know what, what I had tipped him to you know go home with a medal. Hopefully, I was hoping for gold. Um, he went in and, and he unfortunately lost. Mm. Um, so that was that was pretty bad for me. Um, in terms of the, I guess the, the best moment, um, I'd have to say this afternoon, um, just because when Grazia pulled out that forehand serve in the gold gold <laughs> medal match, that that was that was hilarious. It's been a long time since I've seen a forehand serve in doubles, mm -hmm. but if anyone can do it, it's Grazia. Yeah. <laughs> um, now we've had a really great time. Uh, watching the Olympics and hosting the Tokyo 2020 show every day uh, because we love badminton 
Um, that, that's why we're here. Uh, and you know, being able to watch badminton every day uh, is, is a pleasure, um, but it's going to be sad when, when we have to go back to what we normally do. Yeah, it's gonna be sad not to see so much badminton, but I guess from our perspective in, in Australia, we've basically always had at least one channel of badminton on the app that we could watch, mm. which is fantastic for the sport. Of course, Kevin's achievement is fantastic for the sport in Guatemala and around the world as well. Mm. Um, and it, it also ties back to why Henry and I actually started Volant and the badminton podcast. And coming from Australia, look, badminton has always been perceived or very much perceived as a hobby or a backyard sport. You play in the backyard or beach or at a barbecue. Mm. And no one really knows how amazing the world's best players are that we've just been able to watch mm. so yeah so our, our goal and, and what we'd like to do is we really want to introduce more people to the sport of badminton increase that participation by lowering the boundaries making it easier to start and we have like minimalist gear and rackets to to do so but also a podcast youtube channel that helps to share the information and the stories of badminton players and hopefully we'll be able to show the world how incredible badminton is because we've seen amazing badminton this week yeah, absolutely. So if you're not sick of our faces by now, it's episode 11, the last episode. If 11 episodes is not enough, then make sure you check out the screen now uh, that you'll be able to see the URLs for our social media and YouTube so you can uh, continue to uh, enjoy some of the content that we bring out. So just to, as a reminder, we've got men's singles tonight. We have the bronze medal match first, 8 p.m. local time. And then we have the gold medal match, which is the last match of the Olympic Games. Please do check out the screen for the URLs in case you are trying to stay up to date with all the latest results and information. Mm -hmm. And from myself, Jeff and Henry, it's been an absolute pleasure bringing you the Tokyo 2020 show. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.